My name is Steve Sint, and this is the first app in a series of apps about building items that can help you do great still life photography. What we're going to be doing today is we're going to be constructing a light table. Uh, it's a thing that you can shoot products on and that you can have light coming from beneath or behind the subject and actually do shadowless photography. There are commercially available light tables, but they are about three to five times as expensive as the one I'm going to build. And as we construct it, you'll see that it's also not as adaptable as the one that I'm about to show you how to make. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to put a piece of plexiglass under tension and we're going to flex it into a shape that'll make it much stronger than the plexiglass by itself really is. So come along and you'll see how we do it. These are the products that we're going to be using. It's going to be a selection of C-clamps, two saw horses made out of two by four lumber. There's going to be a towel bar. On the floor, you'll see some sandbags that we're going to use as weights to help counterbalance things. We have a sheet of plexi here, plexiglass. It's eighth inch plexi, and it is sandblasted on one side. The reason it's sandblasted on one side is there's a glossy side and a matte side. The sandblasted side is matte, and if you put an item on the glossy side, you'll see its reflection in the surface of the plexiglass. But if you put an item on the sandblasted side, you won't see a reflection. Today, we're using an item for a vertical floor-to-ceiling pole that's called a timber topper and a length of 2 by 4 My goal is always to keep my overhead low. The thing that's really important to always remember about still life photography is that your world is defined and confined by the edges of the frame. Whatever is outside of the frame is not relevant as long as it does its job. We've used pieces of 1 by 2 lumber and C-clamps to spread the load of the metal C-clamp so that it doesn't crack the plexiglass, the acrylic plexiglass because this is our most expensive thing that we purchased for this light table. C-clamp is in front of the light table, and the reason for that is because if I have a light shining across the back of the table, this C-clamp, if it was reversed, would create a shadow across the background of our light table. We're going to um, use a piece of 8th inch, 4 foot by 8 foot plexiglass to build a light table. One of the reasons why we're going to flex this piece of plexiglass is to add strength. Here's a piece of typing paper, regular old typing paper. If we were to hold the typing paper by one end and let the other end go, watch what happens. This piece of paper has inherently no strength to it. However, if we were to put a curve into the plexiglass, like the, into the paper like this, all of a sudden the paper becomes much, much stronger. The idea is that even though our plexiglass sheet is an eighth of an inch thick, it also has no inherent strength. You'll see later in this video how the plexiglass will sag even though it's clamped to two sawhorses, but in the middle there'll be a major sag. By flexing the plexiglass, it gains a lot of strength and becomes much more useful. It can support more weight, it can be used for more things, and in a little while I'll even show you another reason why we want to flex the front of the plexiglass light table that we're building downwards. You'll need to drill a hole through it to attach a rope to it. If you don't have a special plastic drill bit, you can clamp two pieces of wood one to each side of the plexiglass and drill through the plexi wood sandwich. It will stop the plexi from cracking. I want you also to notice, since we showed the sawhorses at the very beginning, we've added hooks to the sawhorses and we've hung sandbags from them. Because in the next step, 
we're going to flex this center, front edge of the plexiglass table to get rid of this bow in the middle so that we have ourselves a flat work surface that's stronger than the current work surface we have. Notice that not only is the front edge of this piece of plexi bowed, but the back piece over here is bowed equally, equally as well. And one of the things that you very often want when you're constructing a light table is you want the plexiglass to be relatively straight because it creates shadows and light that goes on it. It is more even. One of the ways to do that, Matt, could you join me? is we take the top edge of the plexi and we pull it forward and then I take a piece of closet pole and we just have to drop it in behind the behind lift your end a little there we go we just have to drop it in behind the plexi and now we've curved the plexi this way and when by curving the plexi this way it puts it under stress and it makes it much stronger so it's not being held in by anything. There are no C-clamps. Is all we're using is, is the natural resiliency of the plexiglass to position it the way we want. We've attached two C-clamps to the front legs of the sawhorses. We will slide a closet pole under them. This pole will be tied to the rope that's tied to the plexi. I want to show you how a square knot is made. You have two pieces of rope. If you take the left side of the rope and you put it over the right side and you make it into a simple overhand knot. Then you take the right side of the rope and you put it over the left hand side of the rope and you pull the knot tight. And if you look, it's like two interlocking loops. And that square means that it doesn't slip. By flexing the front edge of the light table downwards, it allows you to use a lower camera position. This makes your subject look bigger and more impressive. Now you have a light table. It can become a cornerstone of, that will form the backgrounds for a tremendous amount of your photographs. If you build one like I'm suggesting you build one here, it has a lot of strength. It can hold relatively heavy items. When you want to break it down, it can basically disappear and hang on a nail in your studio. And it has the advantage of the fact that you can put lights beneath it and actually create shadowless pictures. You don't have to worry about shadows if a light is underneath the table because the shadows fall on the table and the light coming up from beneath it basically cancels them out. It's a really classy, easy way to take terrific pictures of products.